Graham, obviously, uh, earlier in the season, this uh, trip to Gillingham would have been not an easy game, but uh, one of the easier games in League Two. Now, on paper, it's the hardest place to go on four in, in all of League Two. They've had such a good run at, uh, at Priestfield recently. Um, Gillingham has always been a Gillingham, for, in, in my recollection, and, and going there as a player, going there as a, as, as, as coach, as manager, uh, Gillingham has always been a really, really tough place to go. Um, that hasn't changed. Um, the dynamics of Gillingham Football Club over the last um, the last 12 months, um, with the, the the influx of, of finances, has obviously made it even tougher. So um, yes, you would fully expect Gillingham with the finances and the backing that they've been giving you would fully expect them to be up there and they will be one of the teams challenging next year. So it's a mammoth task, it's a massive challenge, it's a great challenge and, uh, and of course uh, we here at Newport County AFC would like to pass on our condolences as well to Gillingham Football Club um, with the loss of Tony Schmidt who's, uh, who's an absolute legend in them parts and I'm sure the Gillingham fans will come out tomorrow and fill the place um, and, uh, in recognition of recollection of his, uh, his achievements at the football club. So it'll be, a, it'll be an emotional atmosphere, it'll probably be a full house I would guess. It'll be, a, it'll be a real, real tough task but one that our players will relish, one they'll look forward to. Uh, Neil Harris is someone we know well from his time at Cardiff, what do you, what do you make of the job he's done? And it's a, He's a good example of a club sticking by a manager because obviously there was a, a time when he was earlier this season when he was under a lot of pressure. Well, look at that. That's that's what happens when you can uh, you get major investment. You can bring in and and, and recruit. And, and <coughs> recruitment is key in this division. So if you can get your recruitment right, you're uh, you're uh, you, you'll do well. How are you feeling, Graham, about things? Obviously, closer to home at Newport County. It's. Um, Job done. You came here with a remit to keep the club in the in the football league. You've done that with room to spare. How are you feeling more generally as we come closer to the end of the season? Um, I, I, I'm not really a lover of the end of season and uh, job done and all those type of. We we we're, we're professional footballers and and, and if, if if I'm being honest, I get over the last couple of weeks, people are you know, over the line and this that and the other and, and, and all this nonsense. Our group are professional footballers. And they're, uh, they're they're there to, to to compete. They're there to win games. And um, you know, the end of the season shouldn't be any different to the beginning or the middle uh, of the season. Um, you you should want to compete and win every football match. So there's there's two massive challenges ahead. There's still still a couple of weeks work left uh, before the players go off on a break. But uh, they're not on that break as of yet. So. Uh, and I think you can tell by the uh, the intensity and, and, and the second half in, in which we uh, we played. Well, the whole game actually did a night and and how we played. Um, but we just need to cut out basic silly errors at the back. Um, they were a major problem to the club early doors. I got on top of that, but all of a sudden over the last handful of games they're raising their ugly head again. So um, that's really a bugbear of mine, sloppiness and um, the goals that we're, we're, we're conceding. So, so that'll need to be looked at and, and, and possibly addressed at the end of the season. Yeah, sorry, I didn't really mean job done in terms of season over. I meant in terms of when you came in, the fans, a lot of the fans were terrified about losing their Football League status. The board appointed you because they thought you were the man to keep County in the Football League and obviously now that is secured. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I get that, I get that feeling and, and look, when I walked through the door it was a place that was um, pretty much down on its luck, pretty much downbeat, pretty much negative and low confidence, self-belief. Uh, we're in a little bit of bit of trouble, and obviously then the nervy times of of the Colchesters and the Gillinghams going out and uh, and spending their way out of trouble, that was on the horizon as well. But I I tend to be positive. I tend to always look at the the, the, the glass uh, half full rather than half empty, and I just looked I looked at the group of the lads group of lads that that we had. I looked at them every day in training. Yes, I pushed them so hard, and I asked an awful lot of them. Um, that that one or two one or two couldn't live with it. Uh, one or two fell by the way. So. It, but the response I got from the players, and, and in particular the fans, um, even the other night, um, they, 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 they held on to us, they kept us in that game, they kept us going. So it's been a massive, massive effort from everybody. Um, one that we would rather not uh, be, be, we would rather not be in those positions or those, have those scenarios. 
but the landscape of League Two is changing. It's it's changing weekly, monthly. Uh, it is massive uh, now. It's going to become next season a another a, a, a smaller version of League One, whereby you're going to have those uh, those twelve teams up that end and the twelve teams down the bottom. Two two leagues in one. So yes, it's it's um, it is changing. It is uh, it is vital that we 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 kept our uh, our League Two status. And I, I think that we've, we've, we've done that really, really well, to be fair. And I think performances um, have, have really, really improved. I've got stronger and stronger. And that's, that's probably the way I would like them to continue. I'd like them to go. Um, I need to get on top of one or two issues at the football club that, that really needs sorting out. Um, so, yeah, look, all, all in all, it's been really positive. It's, it's been a, a really positive um, finish to the campaign. Yes, I know I'll only have probably 30 games. I would have loved the first, the first quarter of the season, to be quite honest. I would have loved to add to our tally and have the boys ready and, and, and going in. But I know League Two. Um, I think that's probably why the board asked us to come in. Um, I've got enough experience in League Two. I've come out of League Two as a coach and as a player. Um, successfully, so yeah, th th there was, and, and I just hope I've justified my, uh, my my role, and I just hope I've justified them, um, the board's fate and the fans' fate um, that they've shown to me since I've come through the door. Because you're going to have a big, it's going to be a big summer for you because obviously the structure of the club is a bit different to when you came in. In terms of there's been a few departures, the club need, you know. Speaking frankly, the club is in need of leadership, and obviously, as the football leader, now you're gonna you're gonna have to take a very a very active part in that. This this basically as soon as the season finishes. Well, well, we have been doing. To be fair, we've we've, we've I think between myself, Joe, and Joe Dunn and, and Chris Finn, there's enough leadership there. There's enough quality. There's enough nous. Uh, there's enough experience. So we have been doing. We've had some great help from uh, Kelly Anderson and from from Gareth Evans as well. Um, so so leading the football club is is. It's no, I've, I've, I've skippered most of the clubs I've been at, I've led most of the clubs I've been at. Um, I've, I've done that at Southend for eight years really in the background um, where a lot of people wouldn't have seen what I've, uh, what I've done and what I achieved for, for the eight seasons I was at Southend. But when I left Southend, they then sank and uh, hence the reason that they're, they're probably in the National League. Um, and I look at that and I look at the reasons why. So I have no problem doing that, I have no problem being the front. <coughs> I'll also <clears throat> I've no problem when the, 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 the you know when the I'll be the whipping boy as well if anything doesn't go right doesn't doesn't things are not proper things are not right but look we we, we do need help we do need support and uh, it's 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 a very unique football club it's different uh, we'll have to do things differently than than other clubs do um, in in the league we can't go out and and, and spend we know that. Um, so, so there's look, there's, there's there's a great challenge ahead. There's a great challenge. It's going to be massively, massively hard. It's going to be difficult. We understand that. We know that. Um, but look, it's one I'm relishing. And uh, with the support we get off the terraces from the crowd, with the players that work great, their attitude, the commitment, I think there's a real bond, and I, and I think there's a real togetherness. And if we have to do it differently to the other 23 clubs in, uh, in League Two, we'll do it differently. We will cut our cloth accordingly, and one thing's for sure, we will give it our all and we'll give it our best, uh, everything we've got. So I shouldn't be expecting you to go into a bidding war with Ryan Reynolds for Gareth Bale? Well, I wouldn't be able to go into a bit more with, with, with anybody, really, to be honest. I, I, I don't think I can bid, bid much, really, so uh, that, that's, that's just where we are at this moment in time. And I, I have no idea what other clubs will be doing or, or, or what have you. So, and, uh, I never really get into that, but look, I've got to look after ourselves, really. And I wouldn't be getting into a bit more with anybody because I just wouldn't win a bit more. Obviously, there's been massive attention to Wrexham's promotion because of the documentary, their new owners. Obviously, for my job, it's been a huge deal um, with them getting back into the Football League. I was there 15 years ago when Newport, sorry, not 15 years ago, that's how long they've been in the conference. I was there when Newport beat Wrexham at Wembley to retain their place, to get back in the Football League. Um, Newport and Wrexham fans have a pretty big rivalry um, ever since that day. Uh, are you looking forward to that aspect next season? Of obviously, there's no doubt that kind of Newport are going to be the underdogs now because of the money behind Wrexham. But are you looking forward to that because it's again that's what the fans will be as soon as the fixtures come out. When are we playing Wrexham? First of all, look, you congratulate them and and, and you say well done. Um, it's, it's it's a great story. They've, they've done brilliantly. It's hard getting out of the football league. 
you know, the, the National League into the Football League. Um, they've been they've been out a long, long time. Um, I played there myself. Um, I think it was the last year they were in the, the football league. I played there, and, and, and there was uh, there was some really good lads, really good players there. It's it's uh, it's it's a great place to play. It's it's tradition. I don't know if I'm correct. Uh, I, I think Wales used to play there. There used to be some nights there um, with the Welsh Football Club. I can actually remember Mark Hughes scoring a, a, a tremendous uh, a tremendous uh, volley. So, what did they call Spain. it? A bicycle kick against yeah. Spain. So it's got a little bit of history. It's got a little bit of tradition. But look, fair play to them and well done to them. Um, it, it's a great story. Looking that far ahead, I, I just wouldn't be able to to, to look. Uh, the fixtures come out. We'll all look for different fixtures. We've all got different uh, different clubs we want to play against and and, and, and different um, scenarios. Um, but for, for me, it's not really something I will. Uh, I, I'll be I'll be getting too too concerned about until probably the week before we play them. Are you, when that time comes, are you confident that the Newport County we see will be a Newport County in your own image that you're going to be able to put a squad together that you're you're happy with for, for as you say, a full season rather than coming in a quarter of the way through? Well, what I'd like to do and what I can do are probably two different things. So uh, again, that will all play out over, over the course of the summer. It's going to be difficult, it's going to be tough, it's going to be hard. Um, I've got to cut my cloth accordingly. Um, but look, I'll, I'll, as I say, I'll, I'll try and mould the team in, in the best possible way I can. I'll try and get the best out of what we've got, uh, when we get it, how we get it. Um, but like I say, I'd love to carry on the work that we've, we've, we've done uh, with that high intense, high press football, with the uh, pinning teams back in, getting the ball wired, uh, servicing the box. You know, I'd love to carry on with that. And the fitness levels as well that the lads have shown over uh, over the period we've come in, so so they will be very much part of our DNA, and they are part of our DNA. So I don't see them disappearing from from uh, our uh, our team or on a Saturday afternoon. So hopefully we can carry that on, and I'll try and recruit in the summer accordingly, and the best people that can uh, that can actually help. Uh, help us carry that on, and I'll, I'll, I'll try and bring those in. Naturally, I'll have to uh, the remits, the financial remits that I'm, I'm, I've got. I'll have to obviously work within that, um, as does every manager. So we all have our challenges, but yeah, I'd like to carry on and and build upon what we've uh, what we've uh, built already. That's not always possible, but we'd like to stick to it as best we can, and, and and try and push it on, and try and improve it as best we can. Obviously, in the remainder of this season, you you've talked about. You know, the season's not over, even though the main objective has been achieved. Obviously, for some of these players, they're literally playing for their for their futures. As some of them are, are out of contract end of the season. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I've had some very, very good uh, dialogue. I've had some very good uh, meetings with a number of with a number of players so far. So uh, things are things are moving along. Um, again, like I say, what I'd like to do and what I can do are two different things. So I, I, I've got to box clever. Um, I've, um, I've had some really, really positive feedback um, from a number of players. Um, I've made uh, contact with a lot of, lot of players, both here and elsewhere. So there will be one or two changes, we know that. But I, as I said all along, I don't envisage wholesale changes. I don't envisage massive, massive changes. Um, I don't think we'll be able to do that. So we'll, um, you'll, there'll be a lot of familiar faces, I would have thought, uh, here again next season. Um, well, I hope, anyway. And is the loan market something you'll look to obviously contacts in the game, clubs who will trust you with younger players perhaps as, as we've seen in you know, in January you were able to, to bring in a player maybe falls in that category. That that's maybe important for a for a club like Newport. Yeah, massively, massively. That 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 that's that's of massive importance. And I think we've got enough contacts as you say, and we've got enough um, good people in the game willing to help us and people that trust us. And there's a lot of good young talent out there, like you've you've seen with with uh, Matt Baker, Callum Kavanagh, and Charlie McNeil, 18, 19 year olds, you know. And that's where we'll probably be shopping. That's where we'll probably be fishing. But I would suspect um, us as a football club, I would I would think we will always have to maximise those five loans, um, given our uh, given our, um, our our circumstances. And that's obviously. You have the contact, you have people who trust you, and maybe as a wider thing, Newport over the last few years have maybe earned a bit of a reputation as a club where young players can thrive. Ben White was here, Anton Semenyo, 
Um, so you know, uh, there've been some, there've been some very good players here in the last few years. Yeah, there has, and they've, they've, a lot of players have gone on to to, uh, to bigger and better things, and a number of players have uh, have, have, have come back and, and, and tanked and sent nice messages to Newport. So that's that's a big thing for us as well. Um, we've, we're getting some really, really good feedback from clubs like Liverpool, Man United, Middlesbrough, um, Stoke City. So we're getting some real good positive feedback from those clubs as well. So, um, but I, I think you know it's 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 you know a good environment. It's a it's a great club. It's a great uh, great town. You know, it's the people are the people are brilliant. And as I say, yeah, the fans the fans just get behind you. And I think you can see the bond between fans and players. And, and that's part and parcel of your loan spell when you go and you get that connection with the fans. Some of the lads last week at Doncaster, we were talking about getting over the fence, of getting over the barriers and in and sitting with the fans and talking to them and. I think when you see at the end of the game how close our fans and our, our, our players are, and that's win, lose or draw, because there has been some some um, games here where we, we haven't won, but the fans still cheer you off, and testament to them. And even the other night when we were probably low on energy, given the, the schedule we've had over the, over the, particularly this month, um, the, the fans, they just beat that drum, they sing their songs, and they just galvanise the group, and the group just go again. So I think there's a real connection between the players and the fans, and I think that's something that when you go out on loan, that's something you uh, you always remember, and it's, uh, it's one of the factors that you take back with you, and uh, you, you really, really uh, enjoy it. It's, it's, it's great to see. It's great to see. So all them elements we will need to use. We will need to. We will need to. Uh, we will need to use in our advantage going forward. As you said, do you want to harvest that with the fans because for a long time this place was a really, really difficult place for away teams to come. The last two seasons, obviously, County have picked up more points on the road than they have at home. You presumably want to get back to this being a place that basically no one wants to come because the, the fans are so close to the players, they, they can have such a big impact on, on the game. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's listen, I've come here as, as I say, as a coach, as a manager, and uh, as a player, and it's, it's, it's a real, real tough place to come. Um, I must obviously congratulate uh, Joe, James, and, and John about the, on the pitch, winning three awards in 12 months is, is, is unbelievable. Pitch two, or uh, pitch league two, pitch uh, the year again. Is testament to them, um, but I would ask them could I spend a little bit more time here because we uh, we come here probably twice a month and that's us. So I'd love to be able to do me shave set pieces, patterns maybe the day before the, uh, the the home game and just spend a little bit more time here, just get used to our environment. Maybe if we could have another pre-season game or, or two over the course of uh, July, early season, just just getting getting used to the place. I would like to spend more time here and, and just try and get. Get that feel for the for, for the place. Um, it, it would be nice if we could, um, if, if, if we could open open some dialogue there, um, because uh, it's, it's it's a wonderful pitch. And if, if we could get a training session once a week or, or, or even twice a month on it, it, it would help us immensely. It would also help the mindset, the mentality, and uh, and and the, uh, the the home advantage. That that would certainly swing in our favour if, if if those things could be looked into. But again, look, you have to manage as you. As as, uh, as the circumstances have you're given, you manage them as best you can. So uh, yeah, that that would be something I would like to grow, and I would like to maybe uh, I'd like to look into getting some more time here, and um, not only for games in the in the preseason, but uh, for but maybe a training session or two, just to familiarise ourselves a little bit more with our our, our, our arena. Lovely.